Hi, I'm George Alger today with Craig Shields. Craig is the author of Renewable Energy, Facts and Fantasies, and he's also the editor of Two Green Energy. And today we're going to be talking about cold fusion. So, mm -hmm. welcome, Craig. Happy to be here. All right. What, first of all, what is cold fusion? Well, I'll explain it to you technically in just a couple of sentences, but you should know, you know how it's regarded first. Why is it an important topic? And that is that it's, it's, it's controversial. There are people who believe that it's a hoax. There are people who believe that it's legitimate science. If it's legitimate science, it has enormous potential to change the energy picture now and forever. Okay, so it's a hot topic, pardon the pun. Um, so now what is it? It is, um, in uh, 1989, two people at the University of Utah came up with an experiment in which they took heavy water. So heavy water, you know, H2O is regular old water, right? So heavy water is water that's made out of deuterium instead of hydrogen. So it's hydrogen iso an uh, hydrogen isotope that has an extra, that has a neutron. So heavy water, when you break that apart in the presence of a palladium electrode, you get much more energy than you would have expected with standard chemistry. And you get reactants that suggest that a nuclear reaction ta has taken place. So nuclear reactions, as you know, are things that use the uh, E equals mc squared, the equivalence of mass and energy. So you get, you get rid of a little bit of mass, but you get an enormous amount of energy. Now normally this, is, this occurs in, for instance, a hydrogen bomb, and it occurs at, in, a, in a fraction in 10 to the minus 22 seconds at enormous temperatures. That's unmanageable, obviously. It's good if you want to blow something up, but not if you want to use that energy in a useful fashion. So th this is a, an experiment which has been duplicated by other scientists through the years that th in which this happens much more slowly and at temperatures that are much more manageable. All right, so it has a lot of potential as energy, and you're mentioning the, the controversy of it. Is the controversy because it is, you know, it, it's not that workable in the foreseeable future, or is it dangerous? Well, I don't know about the danger. I'm sure that you could uh, create experiments that would be dangerous. There's a whole uh, organization, the Low Energy Nuclear Reaction, LENR.org, that has oodles of, of case studies and white papers on the subject, if you, if you want to check that out. Um, so are some of those experiments dangerous? I don't know. But sir, it's controversial in that there are, there are people who have tried to replicate the original experiments by these guys, Fleischmann and Pons, who have been unable to, um, thus uh, stirring the controversy about, well, does this, did this ever work? Does this have any trajectory for success? Um, I happen to be doing a photo shoot at a friend of mine's uh, uh, laboratory. This is a guy who came out of uh, Caltech. Um, this was on a completely different topic. And he leaned over where I was sitting one day, and he goes, Craig, I want to tell you something. Cold fusion, it's real. And I go, really? Can I come back and talk to you about this? And so I did. And that's the chapter um, in the book, Cold Fusion. It's that, that, it's that um, interview with that guy, Wally Rappel. All right. So if we went along with the thinking that it is viable, and that it could be a replicatable uh, experiment, and it could be turned into energy, what would be the the future of it? I mean, we're thinking in terms of five years, 10 years, 20 years, further out? Well, it's funny. Somebody just wrote me a couple days ago and said, all of the stuff that you people are talking about here is moot um, because the trajectory for um, cold fusion is so immediate that in a few years, we're all going to have little uh, cold fusion, we'll have cold fusion hand warmers in our pockets. And I wrote back and I said, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, with all due respect. Um, so by, this is something that needs an enormous amount of funding in a world that is not uh, horribly forthcoming with funds for new uh, types of unproven technologies. And by my wits, it needs at least uh, many decades. But the thing is that obviously uh, cutting edge physics, think of what we're trying to do here from a f point of view of just the, uh, the top level physics. The Earth receives every day 6,000 more times energy from the sun than all seven billion of us consume. So what we're doing is frantically running around building big things, you know, 100 meters tall wind turbines and huge, you know, hundreds of square miles of PV, uh, photovoltaics and uh, concentrating solar power 
to capture in a game whose purpose is to capture one six thousandth of that, of that energy. Now, when we can, a, a court of heavy, when Wally Rappel does his talk on this thing, he starts with a quart of heavy water, takes a sip of it, and he goes, I just drank enough energy to heat the city of Chicago for a month. So that gets people's attention. It's pretty dramatic. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's how dramatic that the conversion of mass to energy is. A little bit of mass goes a heck of a long way. So how far out are we? It depends on what happens economically and politically. And, and as a consequence, technologically, because nothing really is going to happen technologically until that funding is in place. So I don't think this is a game changer. I'm still very happy to be trying to develop technologies having to do with solar and wind and geothermal and so forth. All right, but clarify for me this. If cold fusion requires a lot of money, a lot of funding, and apparently some infrastructure, and yet it could also be construed as even having the possibility of being used as a hand warmer, I mean, this is a pretty flexible type of energy. So does it require a big facility like a nuclear, uh, you know, nuclear energy area, or is it something like a battery? Well, it's nothing like a battery. The guy, I don't know why the guy said that, and I get, you know, out of all the, you know, you, you know that I get tens of thousands of visitors to the site, and not all of them, you know, have done their homework. So, um, the, uh, and, and to have something in the form factor of a hand warmers over that, I mean, maybe the guy was kidding, I don't know, but um, that's not happening. Um, is this, what type of energy is it? it? It's an interesting question. Energy is energy. So the, the, the energy that is stored in heat or that's stored in the chemical bonds that is this wooden table, or that um, is stored in batteries as a chemical reaction that when it happens forces electrons through a circuit. All of that's pretty much the same thing. From a pure physics standpoint, energy is energy. So the, the question isn't what type of energy it is, is what is, the, what is the scenario by which we can develop this as a repeatable, harnessable set of technologies. All right. So. We've learned a little bit about cold fusion, a little bit about the controversy. So what is your view on this? What is your personal perspective on it? Is it, is it legit? Is it going to happen? Do you know, it's funny you ask, because people ask me, what do I think about this all the time? Not necessarily cold fusion, but what about global warming or what about whatever? And I hate to sound that I don't have a spine, that I don't have an opinion. Uh, but I don't, I mean, the truth is, I've got opinions on all kinds of things. If you want to ask me about classical music or, you know, literature or whatever, things that are essentially opinion in nature. Things that are scientific in nature, I don't think I'm, uh, opinions don't apply to science, it seems to me. I'm, the, which is a long way of saying that I'm only as good as the people I interview. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an expert. I'm not a climate scientist. I'm not a, a fusion expert. I'm a guy who talks to fusion experts and pretty much uh, takes what they say, um, understands it, analyzes it, and spits it back, you know, makes sense of it in my own mind, and write about it to people who, who want to understand it at some level. So uh, because of the people I've interviewed, and what I've read on this thing, I do believe it's legitimate science, but I think that it has a long way to go until it's ready for prime time. All right. Thank you, Craig. That's all we have for this segment. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. This is George Alger with the Two Green Energy Report.